spent this afternoon here at the London School of Diving doing things for Sea Shambles, which is at the Royal Albert Hall on May 17th, and you should all come because it's going to be amazing. And it's all about the ocean, and what we've been doing here this afternoon has been all about something that's really important in the sea, but that no one ever really talks about, and that is sound in the ocean. Years ago, decades ago, Jacques Cousteau, the very famous French ocean explorer, uh, wrote a book about the ocean and he called it the silent world and it has bugged me for years because he who was one of the people who invented modern scuba diving of he of all people must have known that it is not silent in the ocean sound travels really well underwater but it's a bit different to the way things travel upon air and um as part of my science my research i study the sound underwater sound and especially the sound that bubbles make and so i couldn't pass up an opportunity in a dive pool with a load of musicians and plenty of toys to uh, explore some of the differences between sound above water and below water and the first thing the first thing you need to know is that the reason we ignore the underwater world is that sound doesn't pass through the boundary as soon as you Put your hand below the water. If you're sitting on the side of a pond and you just dip your hand below, you're putting your hand into another acoustic world. There could be plenty of things going on down below the water, but the sound doesn't get out. So if this is the water surface here, sound from above bounces off and sound from below bounces back down. And so this water surface right here is an acoustic mirror from both sides. So all sorts of things can be happening down there that we can't hear up here. <laughs> Just to demonstrate that water sound doesn't travel through the surface, um, I've got a lovely wind chime here, I chopped the top of it off, so I've just got one. And it makes a lovely clear ringing noise up here on the surface. And if I put it down below the water, first of all something really cool happens on the way down, <laughs> so the pitch changes. But I'm hitting it below the water now and you almost certainly can't hear anything. However, what I'm going to do is I've got a little GoPro here and I'm going to set this recording and put it on the steps here. So the GoPro, which has an underwater microphone, hydrophone on it, is going to be able to hear the things above water, below water, that we can't hear above water. So here we go again. So here's the sound above the water. I love that noise. This is brilliant. Look at this. When you hit it down here, you get this amazing noise that comes back up. Uh, and all of that is just because the way this vibrates is pushing on the air around it and um, much, much easier to move air than water. So above the water we get a different sound because it's only the bit in the air that can move. So what the GoPro heard was that when this whole thing is below water you can hear it really clearly. But you can't hear anything up above. And so that's the reason we underestimate sound in the ocean. It's rubbish. There is an amazing world of acoustics down there. There's lots of animals that communicate using sound. It isn't just whales and dolphins. So obviously, the big whales communicate using deep noises, those haunting whale calls that we hear that are super low. And then the odontocetes, the toothed whales, like the orcas and the dolphins, they're, talk they're using sonar, high-frequency sonar, to sense their world, so they're using sound all the time. But they are not the only animals that use sound in the ocean. There are fish that grunt and rasp and honk and make all these funny noises to communicate with each other, to know what's going on. And there was a really recent paper um, in Nature that talked about the recolonization of a coral reef. So a coral reef is a noisy place. There's all these fish, there's parrotfish, parrotfish rasping away at coral. Um, there's big fish traveling past, there's dolphins going past coral. There's all these things going on. But when coral has died, it's bleached, suddenly it goes quiet. And there was a recent paper that suggested that if you played sound, uh, the sound of a live, healthy coral reef, it helped animals come back to the reef. So sound is really important in the ocean and it is the best way to explore the ocean. That's why we use things like sonar. If you go down into the deep ocean with a big torch, you can only see a short distance. It doesn't really help. It helps you see maybe 10 or 20 metres if you're lucky in most regions of the ocean. But if you take a sonar down below the water, um, it's, a beam, it's an enormous searchlight in sound. You can look at, you can scan the water surface. And when people talk about mapping the ocean, the way most of that has been done, the shape of the seafloor has been done basically using downward pointing sonar from ships. You send the ping of sound down, 
you measure the time it takes to go down and back up again, and that tells you how deep the ocean is. So the ocean is really an acoustic environment, and it's one of the reasons that we don't appreciate it, because it's dark, so we can't see, but then we don't hear very well underwater, so we can't appreciate what's down there.